Welcome to part 3 of the i2 Costex training video series. In part 3 we'll examine how to work with BIM building information modelling, including extracting the quantities and creating a full BIM estimate in minutes. i2 Costex not only supports a range of 2D files as we saw in part 1 of the training video series, but it's also compatible with a huge number of BIM files. Firstly, we can support files from Revit, either as RVT or as 3D DWF, DWFX. I2 Costex can also support IFC files, which is the internationally recognized BIM file standard from Building Smart. These can be files from Archicad, Tecla, SketchUp, and a range of other programs. The well known CPI XML data format is also supported in I2 Costex, so we've got a wide range of options available to us. These files can be exported natively or through a variety of plugins. Once we've got our model loaded up in i2 Costex, it's easy to navigate around. Firstly, we can rotate around the model by just clicking and dragging on the mouse. We can also zoom in and out using our mouse wheel. You can pan around by holding down the mouse wheel. And you can also use this view cube in the top corner. So I could click on the front view or the top corner or the top and so on. And then I can press my middle mouse button to then drag the model around. If we want to look inside the model, then we can use the I function. For example, I'm going to view this from the top. I then hold down the E key on my keyboard and I push the mouse forwards and backwards. I don't use the mouse wheel. I actually push the entire mouse. And if I just move that slowly by holding down the E key, you'll see that I2 Costex then zooms in and take cut throughs for me. What I can do is once I've reached a view that I want to use, for example, the basement here, I can release the E key. I can then zoom out using my mouse wheel, scrolling backwards, and I can then see that view there. I can pan around by holding down the mouse wheel as per before. Once I've done that and I want to see the entire building again, I can hold down the E key once more and I can pull the mouse backwards. And you'll see that I2 Costex then reverses that for me until we see the entire model again. We can also use transparent mode. So by clicking on the button up here, I2 Costex will turn the model transparent so we can have a good look around inside and see what's there. In addition, we can use layers just like with the 2D file. So if I go to my layers tab here, I can either turn the layers on and off by clicking on them on the left hand side in this list or I can actually click on the actual objects on the model itself. If I want to understand whatever else is on a layer, I can hold down the shift key and I2 Costex will then highlight the other components for me so I know what's going to disappear before I click on it. Once I'm done with that, I can click on the all layers button to turn everything back on again. Once we've navigated around the model, we can start to look at the properties. If we wanted to inspect the roof, for example, we can right click here and then select object properties. And we can see everything that's come through with this model. There's various information contained here, depending on what type of file it is, whether it's an RVT, a DWF, IFC. It also depends on what software the, the model has been drafted in, whether it's Revit or Archicad or various other tools. But the key information that we have in here is the categorizations and the dimensions. So for example, we can see that it's roof, basic roof, and a pitched roof. And we then have a build up of the actual roof structure itself notated here. As well as that, we have the dimensions. So we can see that we've got a roof area of 959 meters squared. You have other information, for example, constraints, and we can use those within the zones in our model maps, and that enables us to easily categorize different sections of the model into the different zones that we want to portray with an I2 Costex, enabling us later on to easily split out and see the quantities and the costs associated with those different zones. Once we're done with the object properties, we can just click on close. If we want to isolate certain parts of the model, we can do that quite easily by right clicking and then we can say show only objects in. 
So you can see we could show all six roofs or we could show just the one of this particular roof, this roof pitched 50 SS and so on, or the particular instance, if you had multiple of that type there, if that had, for example, three, you could just isolate this roof that we're highlighting here. So if I do that now quickly, I want to see all six roofs. You can see that they are shown there. We can also open up our schedule and our schedule enables us to see the data associated with the objects on the screen. And that schedule is automatically filtered and sorted uh, for the visible objects. So you can see here, this is all the data associated with just those six visible roofs. I can then close the schedule by clicking on the button there and I can view everything by right clicking and then selecting show all objects. The other thing we're able to do is to isolate objects within a area, for example. So if I wanted to see objects that were in this lower part of the building, I could right click and say show only objects in an area and then anything that's entirely enclosed within this selection box. So anything that's partially enclosed will be ignored but only things that are entirely enclosed within this selection box will remain. So we can then see there we have a nice cut through and the schedule, if I opened it up, would just show me the information related to those visible objects. You can see that the rest of the building has been displayed in this sort of transparent uh, ghost view. And we can turn that off and on if we want to under our drawings ribbon here, you have the ghost view button. Once I'm done with that, I can right click and show all objects again. The other way to work is to use the model tree. So if I click on model here, I can then click on individual nodes. For example, if I wanted to click on the casework node, we can then see the casework items displayed. Or if I wanted to view just the countertop with sinks, I can click on those. Or I can expand this out and I can see the individual countertops and I can click on them to view them one at a time. And each time you do that, if you have the schedule open, it will then filter the schedule to show you what you want to see. And once I'm done with that, I'll click back on this drawing node at the very top to display everything. And then I'll click back on my drawings here to go back to the start. Now to get the quantities from the BIM file, there are a few different ways to get this information. Firstly, extracting automatic quantities by using the i2 Costex BIM templates. This is mainly used for DWF, DWFX and Revit files. The templates are supplied with the software. And if we select the Revit general template by going to our dimensions ribbon, import, import dimensions using a BIM template. You see that this Revit general one here is the most popular. i2 Costex will now run through the model and automatically extract the quantities. We can then see the quantities have been extracted into the dimension groups on the left hand side. I2 Costex comes up with a warning just telling me the units it's assumed and I'm okay with the units there. So if I press OK, I can then open up these groups here. So if I open up the doors folder, for example, it shows me all the doors that have been extracted from the model. I'm then able to right click and isolate either folders or just dimension groups to then see the information that has been extracted. Another way that we can get quantities from the BIM file is to use the model maps function. This allows users to determine what specific data will be extracted. For IFCs, we'd use the model maps function over the BIM templates, and some prefer to use model maps for all of their BIM file types. To create a model maps, click on the model maps button. You can then see within here we have global model maps, which are which apply across all of I2 Costex, and we have project specific ones that we can create just for this project that then don't interfere with our global list if you've got lots of people working within the system. So if I create a project specific one here, I then press the green insert button and I then give it a name. So I will call this something like example.
Within our model mapping view, we have these four different panes. In the top right, of course, we have the model. Below that, we have the data schedule. On the left hand side, we have the, uh, the, draw, the model tree. So we can click on the individual nodes. And then below that, we have the mapping definition. Now, the best way to do this is to go through and set up different definitions for each node of the drawing because of course the way you want to extract quantities for say the ceilings is going to be very different to the way you want to do it for doors. So if we take ceilings as an example, I can click on this ceilings node. You can then see the model has been filtered to just show me those ceilings and so has the schedule. First thing I'm going to do is to decide which folder I want the ceilings to go into. I can manually type the folder in here enclosed in speech marks or I can actually pick the data from the schedule. Now I'm going to use this level one column here which says ceilings so I can just drag and drop ceilings into the folder and you can see that i2costex has automatically inserted the column name which is level one enclosed within these square brackets. Now if we want to have I2 Costex break that down further into perhaps the ceilings on different levels of the building, we can do that as well. What I would do is put in a plus sign. I then put in a backslash enclosed within speech marks and then another plus sign. So we use these plus signs to join things together. And then from my data schedule, I'm gonna pick the level field and drag and drop that into there. So you can see it will give us the level one information, which is ceilings, and then it will break it down by which level of the building these sit within. Next, I tell i 2 costex which dimension group name I want to use. I'm going to use something like uh, perhaps compound ceiling. So drag and drop that across, which gives me level two. And then I'm going to put in a small spacing formula. So again, I use the plus sign. I put in a speech mark, a dash, close speech mark and then another plus sign to join it together and then I'm going to put in this level 3 information. So what that's going to give me is compound ceiling space dash space 600 by 600 millimeter grid. The measure type you can leave as automatic or you can set it to tell you which piece of information you want. So I'm just going to set area because I want to use the area here and then if I scroll down you can see the other fields that you can set. Just for simplicity, I'm just going to use the area field. So you can see area here. I'm just going to drag and drop that into there. As you're going through and building up these definitions, you can always preview what information you've created by clicking on the preview button here. You can see we have a folder of ceilings. We then have subfolders for the different levels of the building. And if I expand a couple of those, you can then see the dimension group name it's given us and the area associated with it. And once you're done creating these model maps, there is no save button. Everything is saved automatically. I can just press close to then exit. Once I've exited my model map creation view, I'm just going to close down my schedule. I'm going to show all objects again. And if I want to run that model map that I've just created, I go to import using a model map, choose the model map in question, and then press select. i 2 costex then gives us the information on the left hand side in our dimension groups list. While it would be useful if when you received these models they would contain all the data that you need for your quantity extraction process, in reality there will be situations where there is data missing that you need to add in, for example, elemental codes or trade codes or rate codes or various other information. Now i2 costex allows you to supplement the model with that additional data. So if I open up my schedule by clicking down here, I can then save this into Excel by right clicking and selecting save into Excel. I then save it to my computer. I can add additional information into that by adding columns into the Excel sheet. And once I've created my Excel sheet with the additional data, I can bring it back into i costex by selecting it from this properties file name under the drawing properties. 
anything you add in will be shown in yellow. So as an example, if I was to filter it to just show me the windows, and if I scroll across, you can see a couple of columns here are shown in yellow. So I've previously gone through and I've supplemented this model with a QSID code, which is a, an elemental code. In this case, it's NRM1. And then next to that, I've also supplemented it with a rate code to tie up with my rate libraries. And they are shown in yellow just to let me know that that's not original data, that is supplemental data that I have added. And that can be used as part of the model mapping process. Yet another method to extract quantities and create a customized estimate is to use object-based dimension groups. This will create specific takeoff somewhat similar to the model maps function. Say we wanted to extract quantities from the windows, we can right click and create a dimension group from this. I'm going to give it a simple name like windows. I'm going to put it into a folder of example. I want to measure an area and I'm going to leave the color as is. I then go to my BIM dimensions tab and I then tell i 2 costex where I want the area information to come from. I can type it in if I know it or I can click on this ellipsis button to open up the expression editor. If I go to my properties tab, it then shows me all of the properties associated with that particular window. Now I'm going to calculate the area. If I had an area field within here, I could just double click on it. However, in a case like this, I don't actually have one. I have, for example, the height and the width. So I'm gonna use those instead. So I can double click on the height. I can then type in a star for multiplication, height times by width. I can then press close and you can see that formula has been inserted in the box there. If I press insert, you can see that my windows dimension group appears on the left hand side. And if I wanted to measure these windows, I can just click on them. And each time I click, you can then see it adds that to my dimension group. I can hover over that and that tells me the area is 3.26 meters squared. To make it easier for me, I can right click and say show only objects in windows, for example. And I could go through clicking on them individually. Equally, I could right click and say import objects in an area. And if I selected a box around those eight, they would also be brought into my dimension group on the left hand side there. And as well as that, I can right click on an object and then I can say import objects in and I can then choose whether I want to bring in all 80 windows or just the 72 double variable casement or just the 45 of that particular size or just that particular window. So there's different ways to do it depending on the outcome that you want. The final way that we can get quantities from the model is by using manual measurement. So previously we've been into object mode, which focuses on getting the quantities from the object properties. For manual measurement, I'm going to switch into point mode at the top here. I'm going to isolate the objects that I'm about to measure. So I've right clicked on these sandstone paving items and I've then said show only objects in sandstone paving and there's six number of those. I then select the dimension group that I want to use and I've previously created this example sandstone paving dimension group as an area. I can then click around the four corners of an object and then press enter. And you can then see I2 Costex gives me the dimensions associated with that. And that's purely the physical geometry of the object. As well as clicking around the edges of an object, you also have the ability to hold down the shift key and I2 Costex will find the face of an object. And then with a single click, I2 Costex then presents you the area associated with that, in this case, 93.02 meters squared. This manual measurement feature is a great tool for having in cases where the model doesn't contain all the quantities that we need. Another great feature that i2 Costex offers is the ability to create a drawing set from a selection of DWF files. Once the drawings and the model have been loaded into i2 Costex, we can create our drawing set by going to our drawings ribbon and then drawing sets on the top left hand side here. 
If you already have a drawing set within there, you can select it and edit it, or you could create one from scratch if you don't. Now, in this case, it's showing me all of the unassigned drawings. So I can either go through clicking the ones that I need, or in a case like this, I'm going to select them all by right clicking, and then I can press update. I2 Costex has now linked the 3D and the 2D together. So all of this takeoff, for example, here of my doors, I can then go to my 2D sheet and you can see that I2 Costex presents it to me. And if I hover over them, it gives me the information associated with each. Once all the BIM quantities have been obtained, we can add rates and produce a complete estimate in the costing view. This is essentially the same as when working with a 2D only estimate in that we have our hierarchical levels, our live links and all the other features of the i2 Costex workbook. We can either create a workbook from scratch by dragging and dropping our dimension group values in or use a previous workbook template from a past project. We can also use the method of creating a workbook from the dimension groups and when we select a rate library to use upon creating the new workbook it means that a complete estimate of the BIM file can be created in seconds. Combining this with the automatic quantity extraction feature that we looked at earlier, this means that if we have our template set up, we can load a BIM file and do an internal estimate in less than a minute by just adding the model, extracting automatic quantities using the BIM template, and then creating a workbook from the dimension groups. This saves a huge amount of time and gives the user more of a chance to apply their intelligence to the estimate rather than spending all their time actually taking off the quantities. This kind of support, plus all of the other helpful features, including auto revisioning, make i2 Costex the faster, smarter, and more accurate choice for 5D BIM estimating. This concludes our video on part three of the i2 Costex training video series, focusing on i2 Costex's 3D and BIM features.